So that question at the end was really interesting, the way it was framed by Jeff Gleeson. So was it reasonably foreseeable mm. in Van Royen's approach to the ball that he was going to make high contact? No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. They're clutching at straws. They're, 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 they're putting up a case as they should, but they're clutching at straws with that argument, in my opinion. It wasn't, was it reasonable? I tell you what, it's a good, but the best point, he touched the ball. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So that helps. In, in brackets, or he missed by millimetres. Oh, well, <laughs> Zed Man didn't say that, no, did I he? I double checked that. <laughs> <laughs> Zed Man forgot to tell it's us all that. With a, it's a game of millimetres, Rob. <laughs> The more I look at it, the more it is a reach. Not yeah, a, yes. It's just not a strike. Should have been a free kick for high. And you know what? And something like that. Actually, you can have a 50 metre penalty as well. OK, we don't want that to happen. Come back. But he should not be suspended for that. I'm a little bit concerned that it's gone on for so long. I reckon the standard deliberation at the moment is about 40 minutes. Is it's it both really? To come to the verdict and then to, uh, to write the the um, citation in the aftermath so that we can all understand the findings. So I'm, your, I'm not fussed by that. No, I think I think you'll be found not guilty, but it w that framing was, if you take everything else out of it and just boil it down to what Jeff Gleeson asked, was it reasonably foreseeable that he was going to make prohibited contact, which is high contact in the way that he approached the contest? contest? That would just give me a moment's worry. No, no, but he did. You can't. You, can, you cannot expect that to happen. Yeah, no. We're he was in furious running with the flu. He, sorry, we're in furious agreement. I oh, know, but you know, I'm just talking, I'm talking to the viewers, mate. <laughs> I mean, there's people at home thinking you're allowed to you're allowed to spoil. Yeah, but you're not allowed to make prohibited contact. But if it's a call of free kick, well, this is the interesting part about the way that it was framed, is if it was foreseeable that he was going to make. The prohibited. Oh, content. that's, it's a that's just offense. a rubbish. That's what. I bet you that was written in the rules today. <laughs> I wouldn't put a pass the <laughs> AFL. They write stuff in the rules. Someone said to me on the weekend. He said, "What? Can't you try and spoil because the other guy's in the better position to mark? Imagine if that was in our game. Oh no, you can't do that. Well, we can't stop that. That's, it's unfortunate. And I hope Charlie Ballard. He, he's a terrific player. He's really important to the Suns and. I was really worried for him when he was on the ground yep. and getting put on the stretcher. And I hope Charlie Ballard is recovering really well and he can play this week. I don't know. But we can't have that as a report. All right. So we're soon enough to find that verdict. David, tell us about the Brad Close case, which went first. Yes, so Brad Close, Geelong argued, like so many clubs have before it, that this was not a dangerous tackle and if it was, impact should be downgraded from medium. We've seen that argument made so many times and it was all they've all failed in the past and this one failed again tonight. So Ben Isle argued on behalf of Geelong that Jordan Dawson contributed to this more than Brad Close did and that the height and weight discrepancy between the pair was a lot of the reason why th they both went to ground. Now, he said it's not Close that brings Dawson to ground, it's Dawson that brings Close to ground. They pointed to the height and weight difference between the two. Dawson, 21 kilos heavier. They said Dawson had prior opportunity and tried to get past Close and that what Close did was reasonable in the circumstances. The AFL, they argued that Close pinned both of Dawson's arms, deprived him of the opportunity to protect protect himself and prevent his head hitting the ground with force. The AFL said there was a driving action here and Dawson was visibly dazed. So they deliberated the jury. As you said, the, the standard deliberation time of about 40 minutes. They came back and said, we accept players tackle by grabbing an arm, but if the tackler realises the tackled player is coming to the ground with momentum but does not release the tackled player's arm that he might have used to protect himself, he will likely have breached his duty of care to that player. That was the key finding Jeff Gleeson put out there from the tribunal and that's why Brad Close is the latest player to fall victim to the dangerous tackle suspension and will miss against Richmond at the MCG on Friday night. All right. I reckon, David, your jury's coming back, so we'll touch base with you in a what, tick. Were you happy with that? Did yeah, you... so I reckon that's a really clear direction now. So... If you pin an arm and you take the player to ground and you don't release the arm so that he can protect himself, oh. you're going to get suspended. Geez, we're asking the players a lot. No, we we're are, asking but, the but players what we're, a lot. The players have been asking for clarity. That, that's <laughs> about as clear as you can get it, isn't it? That was a, that was a quarter of a second and I thought they argued really well yep. that Jordan Dawson, he contributed going he to the ground. Going down. He was coming down. But he had the two arms pinned. The two. If he had one arm pinned, and say he had the left pinned and he was able to... But, God, how do you... That's, well, in a situation like that, they're not standing up. So you've got time to swing and do the double action. 
He's going with momentum. God, they, I think that's a really tough decision. Yep. On Brad Close. So we're getting tighter and tighter Here and we tighter are. on the dangerous tackle. Almost week on week. I yeah, think. yeah, I agree with that. Is it the... Will it long-term serve the game well? Probably. Yeah, lo yeah it will. And it the players will. have been asking for clarity, so this, mm. is, this should actually be disseminated quite widely, the way that this is, the ruling has come down. We are going to watch players let go of players very, very quickly from now on. We've yeah, already started. On the way down. On the way down. You better be letting go. Or, ho or holding them up. Imagine ha if Brad how, Close was how trying late to pull him up. Go to... So, yes, we are asking a lot. And it's really interesting. So I reckon there's a bit of a creep in this from where we were in round two and round three. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I agree with that. Anyway, that, right. I thought Geelong argued pretty well. Let's find Steve. out the Jacob Van Royen decision. David Zeta. The ban has been upheld, guys. Jacob Van Rooyen is going to miss the next two matches. Oh, you've got to be kidding. It's, the ban's been upheld, bro. I'm telling you, it's happened. I'm not lying. But we're now waiting for the reasons from the tribunal chairperson. But that verdict has just come through. He has been uh, banned. That ban has been sustained by the AFL tribunal. Yep, that's going to be on the clause that I read you, and that's going to be the source of an appeal. Yeah, I... That was a surprise to Adrian Anderson when Jeff yeah. Gleeson framed it that way, as it was a mm. surprise to you. Well, it was. And that's going to be the grounds for appeal. Um, I, I think that this has been said before, and I, it's not a big grand statement because a lot of people have said this. We've, I think for the good of the game, we've got to, we've, it's got to be appealed. Now, it may get thrown out, but if it gets thrown out again, the appeal, it's like, right, where are we? So we're going to get back to that stupid bloody comment saying, oh, what happens if you need someone in the head going for a mark? Yeah, I, don't bring that to this desk. But that's, oh no, but that's what people say, right? It's an inane comment. He went to spoil and not hurt the bloke. He went to spoil. Now, so what's... the finding is going to be that it was foreseeable that he was going to make prohibited contact in the way that he approached that contest, that he was going to hit him high. No, 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 that's, cr that's no, no, absolute you, rubbish, mate. Yeah, that's your view, but that's going to be the finding. Yeah, I know, OK, but... I'm just trying to explain the I rules know, and the way that they're being No, I know, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I come in tonight. I'm glad I come in. How did he know that he was going to make prohibitive con contact when re he's running with the fly of the ball and try to judge. We see players every week make split-second decisions of where the ball's going to bounce. It's called reading the play. And he ran back and was trying to read the play by the, by the hands and he went like that. There's no way known he was expecting to hit him in the head. Zero. He wasn't thinking about that. That's not expected. How that? I just don't understand how that's a strike. Oh. Look where he's... A fist is, look where his elbow is. He's almost got him in the cradle of the shoulder. Oh, I'm no. really surprised by that. David, can so you have high. you got the reasonings now? I do. I'll read them to you now. Max Lawton upstairs has been very helpful with this. So it was reasonable for him to look at Ballard and the drop of the ball to assess the situation. But we find his objective at the moment of and prior to impact was to spoil the mark. However, we also find, this is the key line, that a reasonable player would have foreseen that in spoiling the way he did, it would have almost inevitably resulted in a forceful blow to Charlie Ballard's head. That's the main reason from Tribunal Chairperson Jeff Gleeson. That's still ridiculous. That's a big story, that isn't is, it? That is. This is ridiculous. A reasonable player would have foreseen a forceful blow to the head. Oh, no, no. We don't even know what's going to happen in every action on the field, mate. He didn't know that. He's got no way of knowing. He didn't swing his arm. He went in as a defender with his hand out there. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. that oh, Jared, it's a beautiful shot. Is that the moon? <laughs> it's a beautiful I shot, so, isn't it? But I love the fact that you think it might be. <laughs> it just might be a great photo, but... <laughs> Look at that. It's a straight arm. It wasn't yeah. a swinging arm. And Look at... Oh, my God. Anyway, when's it, when's it going to be heard? Well, it would be Thursday. No, oh, we're not going to be here. I was hoping it might no, be tomorrow night. It would be Thursday night, I reckon. Go through it again. So how interesting. Uh, like, we've got oh, Tom massive. and Jack with us to get the, the players' immediate oh, Are they allowed to come in? That. Yeah, they are. They are. You Absolutely pay their fine? Are. You pay their no, fine? They, they wouldn't get fined Depends what that. they say. And then to tell us... So I would say they're reasonable players, aren't they? Those two? Yeah. Because the tribunal phrased it as a reasonable yeah, player. So I, let's put that past them, I shall we? I thought that was a dig 
at young Jacob. No, you're an unreasonable no, player. It was a reasonable player would have foreseen. So let's ask. So is he an unreasonable players. player? Anyway.